Welcome to another episode of China Update, where I provide you guys with the most up-to-date political, economic, and geostrategic analysis on the world's number two economy. My name is Tony. Let's jump in. Okay, happy Thursday, everybody. One brief matter before we move into the main stories today: two top envoys from Saudi Arabia and Iran are meeting in Beijing. It's reported that the two sides will hash out the next steps of their China-backed diplomatic rapprochement. The meeting will be the first senior formal one between Saudi Arabia and Iran in more than seven years. Chinese state media writes that there will be several themes in the trilateral talks, including whether to establish a mechanism between the Gulf Cooperation Council and Iran, or between the Arab League and Iran. And of course, energy, a deep source of strategic vulnerability for China, will be a key topic for discussion. Okay, now for the main developments. Today will be a U.S.-China-focused episode. Tomorrow will be more focused on EU-China and the economy. And first up, yesterday, Wednesday, Taiwan's Tsai Ing-wen was in California for the final leg of her trip to the Americas, which U.S. officials delicately described as a transit. Tsai was meeting with some of Taiwan's last few allies in Central America, right on the heels of the recent Honduran decision. To switch official diplomatic recognition from Taipei to Beijing, indeed, analysts and officials alike are increasingly pessimistic regarding how long Taiwan can hold on to its last official diplomatic partners. Quote, According to three U.S. officials and several other sources close to the matter, the Biden administration has limited options for halting the gradual drift toward China. With some saying Taiwan itself appeared resigned to losing more allies in the Americas, it is a more pessimistic view than President Joe Biden's aides have expressed publicly, and U.S. sources say helps to explain Washington's muted response to Honduras's recent ditching of Taiwan, which was seen as a lost cause. End quote. In California, Tsai met with House Speaker Kevin McCarthy at the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library. Where she expressed, quote, "It is no secret that today the peace we have maintained and the democracy which we have worked hard to build are facing unprecedented challenges. We once again find ourselves in a world where democracy is under threat, and the urgency of keeping the beacon of freedom shining cannot be understated." End quote. For his part, McCarthy expressed, quote, "The friendship between the people of Taiwan and America is a matter of profound importance to the free world." It is critical to maintain economic freedom, peace, and regional stability. End quote. Adding, quote, "I believe that our bond is stronger now than at any time or point in my lifetime." End quote. Tsai also met with a bipartisan group of members of Congress, and it was learned this week that last week on Friday in New York City, she privately met with several senators. Unsurprisingly, Beijing is not too happy about any of this. So far, however, most of the response has been through words only, perhaps because Beijing is hosting top European leadership and former KMT Taiwan President Ma Ying-jeou this week. Some commentators believe that we still may see a more aggressive response in the coming weeks. However, many Chinese officials and state media this week made the kinds of statements we should expect about the visit. For our purposes, just one of these should suffice. Quote, Speaker McCarthy is the leader of the U.S. Congress and the third highest-ranking figure in the U.S. government. If he meets Tsai as whatever identity or in whatever name, it will be another serious violation of the One China principle and the three China-U.S. joint communiques. It will greatly hurt the national sentiments of the 1.4 billion Chinese people. Send seriously wrong signals to Taiwan independent separatists. And undermine the political foundation of China-U.S. relations. End quote. This week, a combined arms brigade under the People's Liberation Army's 72nd Group Army, quote, an amphibious force that is responsible for crossing sea land missions. End quote. In the words of state-run CCTV, held a quote realistic combat-oriented beach assault exercise that honed its capabilities to fight and win. End quote. Also this week, Taiwan's defense minister said that a Chinese carrier group passed through the channel which separates Taiwan from the Philippines and into its territorial waters, calling the move an encroachment. Meanwhile, Bloomberg reports yesterday that Apple is exploring ways to reduce its reliance on Taiwan chips. Quote. 
prompted by concerns over geopolitical tensions centering on Taiwan. End quote. Next up, let's continue with US-China related developments and start with the ongoing technology war. Beijing opened a new front in the semiconductor part of that competition, recently announcing that a cybersecurity review will be conducted on the imports of America's largest memory chip maker, Micron Technology Inc. News of the review caused a modest 4.4% drop in its US share price. Micron said in a statement that it is, quote, cooperating fully and is committed to conducting all business with uncompromising integrity, and we stand by the security of our products and our commitments to customers, end quote. The U.S. memory chip maker is not terribly exposed to China. The PRC represents about 11% of the American company's sales, and according to its 2022 financial report, it only maintains one uh, manufacturing facility in China, in the central city of Xi'an, which may have already been sold. The review into Micron is curious. The US is in a position of strength vis-a-vis -vis China on the semiconductor front and the wider bilateral technology war, and this action against Micron risks further escalating it. Interestingly, last month, the research director at the semiconductor industry consulting firm ICYs accused Micron of being behind U.S. sanctions on Chinese chip companies, which are competitors. Perhaps then this is punishment, or perhaps there are legitimate concerns. Quote, It's possible that the investigation of Micron is intended to pressure the U.S. and its allies to tread lightly on export controls. It's even more likely that Beijing is legitimately worried about China's reliance on Micron chips, or really any U.S. technology. Expect more actions like this going forward. End quote. Other commentators have differing views. Quote, this seems more political in nature than anything, a rebuttal to recent US actions. In terms of specific security risks for the products sold by Micron, I'm skeptical there's anything there. China has been investing aggressively to build out its own semiconductor ecosystem, and where we think about areas where they can be most successful, memory is one of them. End quote. This week, Beijing lodged a lawsuit with the World Trade Organization to review restrictions on chip exports to China by the US, Japan and the Netherlands, saying they may have violated the trade body's principles. Of course, this is all just part of a much larger trade and technology competition between the two countries, which continues to intensify. For example, we have this statement this week, quote, The phenomenon of China Inc., and the convergence between the state and the economy is something that we continue and our systems continue to grapple with. We are working with partners to ensure that we have partnerships and that it's not just us alone taking on the PRC model. End quote. Meanwhile, and on this front, Japanese media outlet Yomiuri Shumbun reports yesterday that China is considering banning the export of technologies used to produce high-performance rare earth magnets deployed in electric vehicles, wind turbine motors, and other products, citing national security as a reason. The outlet explains that Beijing is currently in the process of revising its catalogue of technologies prohibited and restricted for export, a list of manufacturing and other industrial technologies subject to export controls. Japanese financial media outlet Nikkei Asia also published a similar report yesterday, writing, quote, China is considering prohibiting exports of certain rare earth magnet technology in a move that would counter the U.S.'s advantage in the high-tech arena, end quote. The revisions, the outlet explains, would either ban or restrict exports of technology to process and refine rare earth elements. There are also proposed provisions that would prohibit or limit exports of alloy tech for making high-performance magnets derived from rare earths. China continues to enjoy significant advantages given the breadth of its industry in rare earths. However, Western nations and their allies have been making moves to try to rely less on China for purified rare earths for some time now already. For example, Japan's rare earth dependence on China has fallen from over 90% of imports to 58% within the last decade, according to UN Comtrade data. Quote, China has not adapted to the current new global rare earth competition pattern. End quote.
Nevertheless, China still is a major player, and if these export controls do go through, it could have, at least in the short to medium term, rather disruptive effects for several nations. Hey guys, if you enjoyed today's episode of China Update, don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribing, sharing is a huge help. It's just me making these every day and it's a lot of work, so the support is very much appreciated. And for anyone who can go the extra mile to support the channel and help me keep this financially sustainable, allow me to keep producing episodes every day, Patreon and Buy Me A Coffee links are in the description below. As always, thank you so much everybody for the ongoing support. Meanwhile, U.S. media outlet Politico published a story yesterday claiming that Secretary of State Antony Blinken wants to reschedule his trip to China and restart high-level talks, but that, quote, Beijing is giving him the cold shoulder, end quote. We remember that Blinken's February trip, the first for a Secretary of State for years, was cancelled after the Chinese balloon incident. China is now rebuffing the U.S. efforts, writes the outlet, citing unnamed sources. Quote, I've been hearing similar things. This may be PRC punishment for more U.S. misdeeds and an effort to use what perhaps the PRC side sees as U.S. eagerness to talk to extract movement on key issues from the U.S. before they even talk. Or perhaps, as Wang Jisi has suggested, China no longer holds any expectations for improving China-U.S. relations, in which case expect things to get worse. End quote. The Wang Jisi he is referring to is the founding dean of the Institute of International Strategy at Peking University and a well-respected domestic scholar on U.S.-China affairs. Full disclosure, he was also one of my professors during my master's degree at Peking University. Speaking to state media this week, Professor Wang expressed that, quote, The crux of the deterioration in China-U.S. relations lies in their respective domestic political issues. More dialogues can hardly promote the improvement of relations between the two countries. China no longer holds any expectations for improving China-U.S. relations, end quote. State media's anti-U.S. narrative offensive continues this week, too. Xinhua has launched a commentary series called Exposing American Financial Hegemony and Its Disruption of the Global Economy. The first commentary in this series is called How U.S. Dollar Hegemony Creates Global Chaos, which, among other fiery barbs, includes, quote, The United States continues to plunder the world. However, the abuse of the dollar... The weaponization of global financial infrastructure and the country's irresponsible monetary policy are backfiring and eroding the U.S. credibility. End quote. We explored the topic of the United States dollar versus the Chinese RMB in the China Update published last Saturday. Leading state media outlet, The People's Daily, has also launched a new series attacking the U.S., with one piece this week called U.S. Cruel Violations of Human Rights Against Refugees, Immigrants, and another called U.S. An Empire of Arbitrary Detention with the Worst Human Rights Violations. It is very difficult to overstate just how much anti-U.S. and anti-Western content is being consumed by Chinese readers every day. One cannot help but conclude that China-U.S. relations is at its worst point in many decades, and, like so many have observed, it is likely to become much worse. Okay, that is today's episode of China Update. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Have a wonderful day wherever you are, and I will see you all tomorrow.